I'll quickly introduce myself. So my name is Matt and I'm one of the operations managers um, at Nature Track and have been for approaching four years now. Um, I manage a wide range of tours from Southeast Asia to the Middle East, North Africa, North America, but also a lot of tours here in the UK. Uh, back in 2020, I was actually sent on a recce trip to Nepal. Um, so I now manage this tour as part of my portfolio. Um, so I'll be able to, to to describe all the accommodations and the holiday type for you this evening. And talking about the, the holiday type, I'm mainly going to be talking about our tiger tour uh, to Nepal. That's the tigers of Chitwan and the Bardia National Park. So the other holidays we currently operate to Nepal, um, so the, the tiger tour, but we all also have a wildlife adventure and we actually have a tour out there at the moment. Now, this is a fantastic 23 day holiday, so quite a chunky tour, uh, but it takes in uh, trekking, white water rafting, tiger watching and bird watching as well. So it's a fantastic all round tour that encompasses many aspects of natural history, but also these wonderful activities that is very unique, I say very unlike um, the standard nature trek tour. So a fantastic way to explore this beautiful country. We also have a bird watching tour that's um, 10 or 11 days um, and that takes in mainly the eastern section of the country and um, also into Chitwan National Park. And we have a new tour launched for next year um, in May and this is a trekking tour to the Annapurna Sanctuary um, and it's mainly focuses on the birds and the wildflowers. So we have a fantastic local bird watching guide with us. Um, and then we have David Tattersfield, who I'm sure most of you know, um, who will be on the wildflowers for you. So it's a fantastic tour and we're very much looking forward to getting this uh, trekking holiday um, up and running next year. OK, but for the purpose of this evening, um, I will, will be talking about our tiger tour um, and with a slight bit of a twist as well, because I'm just going to mention a couple of the extensions that one can have either side of the main holiday. Um, so I'm going to start with a potential pre-tour extension um, to Suk Lathanta National Park. So that's in the far southwest corner of the country. Now, this is a fantastic national park um, and it has one of the rarest habitats um, in Nepal and almost in the world now. And that is a natural grassland. And, and this is the reason why... Um, but the National Park has an abundance of critically endangered birds, but it's also fantastic for mammals as well. So if you're a keen nature enthusiast, um, it's really well worth putting um, this extension at, at the beginning of your holiday. And it, it's only for two or three nights. So we fly you into Kathmandu, and then we fly you to the southwest of the country. And then it's two nights at a wonderful tented accommodation. Um, and then you, you can explore the park. So here are here is the tented accommodation. Yes, it's not luxury, but it's extremely well positioned. You are right by the entrance gate um, to the national park. Uh, so it really is a fantastic time. You don't have to go long distance driving to get to the reserve, you're pretty much at the front gate. So that's brilliant. And pretty much like anywhere in Nepal, I'll probably touch on this later, you'll almost find yourself yourselves to be the only people in this park. Um, so Nepal is just it's still remote. It doesn't tr attract the number of tourists that neighboring countries do. Um, so when you're here, you will almost certainly be on your own. Of course, escorted by a naturalist guide and driver. And and this is how we navigate around the park. A, a, a typical standard Jeep, like any Jeep safari in, on the subcontinent. And we get to explore the woodland and the natural grasslands. And there are many wide open areas in Suklafanta. Um, so it's a, a great way to observe and scan uh, for the mammals, for the birds, and also the tiger. So a few of the birds that we can see here, Greater Slaty Woodpecker, one of the largest woodpeckers in Asia and Europe, um, et cetera, um, is a target bird. It's um, it's relatively frequently seen um, around the lush forest there. And this is one of the critically endangered birds and least known birds that winters on the reserve. This is a Hodgson's bush chat. Um, pretty much like a stone chat, but uh, it's much larger than the white throat there. But but this gives an idea of just how um, how this reserve attracts these um, endangered birds. Um, and 
uh, the picture I showed you just now, the Bengal Florican. Um, again, this is probably one of the best places in Nepal um, and perhaps Asia to see Bengal Florican. So if these birds are higher on your list, um, it's well worth getting out there. And of course, uh, where I'm in this national park, it's not bad to see tiger. It's not brilliant, but we had um, a group go out there this year. Um, a couple did the pre-tour extension to Suclafanta, and they managed to score um, this fantastic view of a tiger. Um, so there's the population in Suclafanta is still very low with the tigers um, in double digits, unlike the rest of Nepal, and I will touch on that later. But it's a fantastic um place to explore um it's the challenge of finding a tiger um and all the other and all the other mammals as well indian one-horned rhino um have been located in the park it's very good for swamp deer um which are, is are of course the prey item so and that's what it is about in the pool when you're searching for tigers um it's not like india where um you're almost guaranteed to see a tiger in the pool it's much more of a challenge but you're looking for the signs you're listening out for the prey items uh, to try and locate um these amazing predators and if you're lucky you could get a view like that and it's not just tigers here as well leopards also roam the park and uh, still in very small numbers um, so you do have to be lucky uh, which i think this client was scoring a tiger and a leopard but there we go um it could well happen to you okay so that's just uh briefly touching on the pre-tour extension there so this is the main holiday uh tigers of chitwan and Bardia. but we usually go to Bardia first and then transport along to chitwan uh, before flying back to Kathmandu. so it's uh an a one-stop flight from London to Kathmandu, usually with Qatar Airways, uh, with landing in the afternoon the next day from departure. Uh, then we overnight in Kathmandu at a very plush hotel. You will be very impressed, I promise, uh, before we fly you down to the national park. So it's usually Bardia first, and there's wonderful accommodation situated just outside of the national park gates. Um, then we have three nights there. Um, then we drive along to Chitwan. The drive is roughly seven or eight hours, depending on traffic, local road conditions, etc. cetera. Um, so you may have to take that with a pinch of salt. And then we spend three or four nights in Chitwan before flying back up to Kathmandu and flying home. Uh, so that's pretty much the tour in essence. Um, and so Chitwan and Bardia National Park. So Chitwan is the largest national park in Nepal, but we also like to go to Bardia as well. And that's because at Chitwan, uh, although it is exceptional and holds the greatest abundance of Bengal tigers in the country, uh, they are slightly tricky to find. And that is because the understory at Chitwan is quite dense, uh, whereas at Bardia, uh, the understory is rather sparse. Um, so you can see them um, roaming more so um, at Bardia, but with a greater abundance at Chitwan, you stand also a relatively good chance of finding a tiger. So the swings are roundabouts, but as we're going to both, there's a good chance we can score both. And there's some one horned riders um, just along the river there. So at Chitwan National Park, uh, this is just a lovely scenic view, mist coming off the river there. And to access Chitwan National Park, we have to cross the river. Um, so we stay at accommodation very close by, which I'll run through very shortly. Um, and we get a boat onto the main reserve. Then we're in our Jeeps and we do a typical Jeep safari. And this is morning and afternoon. During the day, you get to relax, of course, um, at the wonderful accommodation we use, which is here. So this is um, one of the accommodations at Chitwan called Tiger Tops. There we go. Have to see a tiger now. And you can relax around the pool as well. So very nice grounds for wildlife, great for birds. Um, and just down by the river, there's plenty of mugger crocodiles. And you might even be lucky to see a gharial as well. So here's the inside of the accommodation, the view from the balcony on the right, lovely beds on the left, um, and more accommodation there for you. So it's wonderful accommodation. Um, it's very comfortable, all en suite, um, so you'll feel right at home, I'm sure. So some of the birds that we can see in these parks. So this is a black-throated sunbird, one of three sunbird species that you can see in Nepal. The others are in the mountains. 
uh, the beautiful and cartoon character like long-tailed broadbill, um, an absolute stunning bird that can be seen all across Asia, but um, elusive at the same time, despite all those wonderful colours that come through. And red-headed trogon as well, another fantastic bird, uh, very shy, elusive in the forest mid-canopy. Uh, whilst along the river, uh, a very good chance of seeing this very attractive bird. This is the uh, small pratting crow, a uh, beautiful bird there. Also, um, along the river, you get the river lapwing, uh, very attractive. But of course, um, it's also very good for hornbills. Of course it is in Asia. Um, and this is the largest of them all, the great hornbill. And these are seen with relative ease um, at both parks, Chitwan and Bardia. And they have this huge cask. You normally hear them before you see them. And you're actually listening out for their wing beats because they're so deep, such a depth to those wings, uh, the air whooshes across the... Um, across the park um, and usually they, they land nearby and you hear them crashing into the trees and um, it really is a spectacular sight um, and wonderful to listen to as well. So just quickly moving on to the mammals. So this is a nilgal or a blue bull, as they call it locally. And this is, in fact, the largest antelope um, in Asia. So it's a real treat uh, to see this beast of an antelope. And we can also get exceptionally good views. This is my photo of uh, one horned rhinos. So the joy of this uh, tour is that we get to search for the wildlife by Jeep, by foot, and also by boat. Um, so this is actually taken by foot. Um, and it, it's just great. It means you're not stuck in the Jeep all the time. Uh, you're with armed guards just in case a tiger wanders by, but um, very rarely happens, or if at all. Um, and it's it's just wonderful. You can immerse yourself um, in, the, in the local area. Um, it really is a fantastic place. So I'd say the commonest crocodilian um, in the pool, the mugger crocodile, almost certainly see those, dusting about the riverbanks, uh, nice and easy. But one we do really hope to see is the gharial. And it's thought that there's only around 200 individuals left in the pool. Um, but at Chitwan, uh, you do stand a relatively good chance of locating one. And they are absolutely fabulous when you do see them. Completely bizarre looking, especially at the front end, not so much at the rear. Um, and the views can be exceptional as well. Um, and sometimes viewed from the accommodation as well. So the Garial, that's certainly one that we hope to see when we're out and about on foot or by boat. And of course, the the mammal that we all want to see, the big cat, uh, this is obviously a tiger. And if you can see at the bottom there, this was actually taken by a client um, around Christmas time last year, um, John Kennedy. And this was taken at Bardia National Park. Um, so an absolute fantastic view of a tiger. So it proves you don't have to go to India. If you want to see a tiger up close, you can also uh, go to Nepal. And as I said earlier, um, it really is the challenge of locating a tiger. Um, and it's highly rewarding as well you, you spend a lot of time of uh, tracking the animals there's always footprints along the tracks such as this one but when you finally clock eyes onto one um it really is an amazing experience and just rewards as well so just briefly on the tiger so the photo on the left is my tiger um and whilst i'm talking briefly um try and guess how many are in that photo um so the tiger population um in the pool is increasing exponentially and it has done ever since uh, the turn of the last decade so 2010 there were thought to be 121 tigers in the pool now it's a whopping 355 or say that was last year. So it's almost certainly increased this year. Um, and that is quite amazing. It's all down to the wonderful conservation efforts by local rangers. Um, and it was a bit of a concern during the COVID years, uh, just how the tiger population would continue without the monitoring of the local rangers because minor poaching does still occur uh, from time to time. But um, it proves that you know, the local rangers are still able to get out. The tiger numbers are still increasing, which is absolutely fantastic. We're so used to bad news from around the world, uh, especially from tigers in the far east of Asia. But thankfully in Nepal and also in India, um, so the tiger population is going through the roof, which is brilliant.
And if you haven't guessed uh, how many tigers are in that photo, it's four. And if you don't believe me, I can only apologize. Okay, and there's another photo. So this, so this was my photo taken a few years ago um, at Chitwa National Park, um, and it was taken on foot. Uh, so we were driving around in the late afternoon, and we heard the female calling for her cubs. Um, so we quickly repositioned ourselves and walked out to this dry riverbank, and lo and behold, on the bank stood a couple of cubs, and then eventually the female came out, and then another cub as well. So four tigers all together, and that was a rather unprecedented sighting indeed. And here's another lovely photo taken by client John Kennedy um, at Christmas time last year at Bardia. Wonderful animal and I hope you can join us. So we have a tour going um, in March, uh, still a few spaces left on that one so it's not too late to join our March departure to go in search of the tiger but if not uh, we do have tours in November, um, sorry October or, or March so we run them twice a year. Okay, so now I'm just going to briefly touch on a potential post tour extension if you wanted to. So, and this is at um, at Pokhara, so in the northwest of the country, but not, not quite. Um, it's not that far up, um, but it overlooks the wonderful Annapurna range. Um, so, like gives you an idea of where it is. Um, so, this is situated on top of Tiger Mountain. Um, Sadly, there are no tigers in this area, so um, not named truly correctly, but there we go. Uh, but it is a wonderful location if you just want to relax and unwind at the end of a rather action-packed holiday. Uh, so situated at the top of Tiger Mountain, this is the view from the swimming pool overlooking the Annapurna Range. And that, for the mountain enthusiasts, is the Fishtail um, Mountain there. I can't remember its true name, sorry about that. Uh, but say so it's an absolutely beautiful accommodation, lovely rooms, some overlook the hills, some overlook the forest, um, ex exceptional staff, they look after you extremely well. And there are a number of activities that one can do here, whether it's fishing or local bird watching walks, or simply, as I say, just relaxing on the deck and um, enjoying the wonderful views of the mountains and also the birds that come with that um, and mainly vultures. So if you're into your birds of prey, this is a place to go. So you'll see You'll be seeing vultures and large and have a large birds of prey all day as they use these mountains to firmal up and drift south towards where you are situated. Now, the lodge is um, owned by Marcus Cotton. Um, and if you're into your butterflies, Marcus is the leading butterfly expert in Nepal. So if you want a butterfly um, information on anything, then this is also another place to go. Um, and here's just one of the birds that one can see here. This is the, the Himalayan Black Lord Tit. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for me. Norbu will be up and running shortly with you. If you do require any more information on Nepal, please do contact me, um, matt at naturetrek.co.uk or phone in the office and I'll be there ready to talk to you. But please remember, um, we have tours going out in March for the bird watching and the tiger tour. And we also have the Annapurna Trek in May. And I do hope we can welcome you on one of these tours um, in the near future, if not 2025. Hi everyone, good evening. So my name is Nurbu and I am talking from Bhutan right now. I work as a senior birding tour guide and also I am a host for Nature Track in Bhutan. My job here in Bhutan is to look after look after everything related to the Nature Track trip here in Bhutan and I've been doing this for uh, for more than 10, 10 years now. Then So uh, the, my presentation will begin with a brief introduction to Bhutan, uh, brief introduction to Bhutan, and I'll be also talking how to get to Bhutan, accommodation and transportation you expect on the trip. Uh, then I'll talk about some cultural hi highlight and some of the main bird species that you are likely to see in Bhutan. So here I'm showing you a map of Bhutan. So Bhutan is a small kingdom 
landlocked country located in the southern foothills, southern uh, Himalayas mountain range. It's, uh, we share a border with uh, from the southwest all the way to the southeast. We share a border with the Indian state of Assam and West Bengal. In the north, we have a border with, uh, with China. So moving on, I'll be talking a little bit about the, uh, sorry, moving on, I have to be talking a little bit about, give a brief history of the country. Well, it is believed that Bhutan has been inhabited from very long time back, probably 2000 BC, but the formation of uh, Bhutan as a statehood, the establishment of Bhutan as a distinct political entities began only in 17th century by the master who unified our country. We call it as a Shabtung Awang Namgyal. Then the monarchy in Bhutan started in 1907. Uh, uh, then uh, democracy in 2008 coinciding with the coronation of our current king, His Majesty the King Jigme Kyesan Namge Wangchuk, the democracy, the constitutional democracy has started in Bhutan. Bhutan then when it comes to religion, the predominant religion in Bhutan is Buddhism, uh, Mahayana Buddhism, then which is also a state religion of our country. Then beside that, we all in the southern part of Bhutan, we have a Christian uh, Hindu community. Then apart from that, we also have a small community of Christian in Bhutan. And as a constitution in Bhutan, the, every individual has a right to practice any kind of a religion. Religion, so moving on. I'm going back, sorry. So moving on now, I'm, I'm showing you the getting way to the Bhutan. So in Bhutan right now, uh, there's a two option to get into Bhutan by air and by overland. By air, the, the main right now, the main entry to the air uh, by air is through the town of Paru, which is a home for only international airport in the country. So at this point in time, we have two airlines operating in and out of the country. Druk Air, which is a national airline, and also, the Bhutan Airline is a private airline owned by the Bhutanese uh, company. And here I'm showing you a map that uh, the two airlines connect with falling places in India, Delhi, Kolkata, Guwahati, and Bagdora. Then it is also possible to fly from Kathmandu, Bangkok, and Singapore. So for most of you, it is not really possible to uh, to fly a direct, uh, you don't uh, don't have a facility to uh, have a direct flight from your home. But then, in order to connect to Bhutan, you have to fly to one of these destination. So then, moving forward, I'll be talking about the uh, accommodations and and the transportation that you will be we will be providing on the trip. So these are the accommodations in Bhutan. We have a variety of a place to stay, ranging from a charming Bhutanese guest house to a fancy international chain resort. So on most of the tri uh, we, our trip, nature track uh, trip, we make sure our guests stay in the top notch hotels or guest house chosen for comfort, service, food and other amenities. But then in case, uh, if you prefer more luxury experience, we also have a international chain boutiques, lodges and resort with the spa and other international facilities, other modern facilities. So Nature Track can customize your accommodation to fit your, uh, uh, fit your travel plan. Then uh, when it comes to food, Hotel across the country usually serve a buffet style dish 
allowing you to sample a virus protein is dishes. Uh, the this meal actually typically this uh, meal consists uh, include rice, which is a main food in Bhutan. Along with the rice, we'll have a few vegetable items and also non-vegetable items. Then one of the most famous dish in Bhutan, we call it as a ema dasi. Ema means chili and dasi means cheese. That is kind of a national dish. And this national dish also always featured in, in the buffet. So in the larger town like Paro and Thimpu, we also have an option for Western food such as pizzas, Mexican restaurant, Italian restaurant, Chinese food, and also a specialty coffee. So here I'll be talking a little bit about the transportation we provide here in Bhutan. So we select the appropriate vehicle depending on the size of the group. For the larger group, like six people, eight people, we use a 26-seater uh, Toyota Coaster bus. And for a smaller, medium-sized group, like three, three to four, five packs, we use a Coaster bus, uh, sorry, the uh, Toyota Mini Heist bus. And for the individual, we use a Toyota or Hyundai 4x4 SUV. So in all the transportation, we make it very sure that uh, our guests have, uh, our clients have uh, enough space to, to, to walk around uh, in, the, in the bus. And with this uh, uh, bus, with this uh, vehicle, we also have a certified and a professional driver. So apart from being a professional driver, most of our drivers are also trained as a birders and they, they will be uh, most of the time helping the group find uh, important species. So then moving ahead, uh, I'll be showing you, showing you some cultural highlight in Bhutan, like visit to Paro Zong, hike to Thailand, so I'll start with the uh, with begin with the famous temple, which is an icon of the uh, of the country. We call it as a Taksang, and popularly known in the West as the West uh, Tiger Nest. So Tiger Nest is uh, one of the icon and one of the most holiest site in Bhutan, and it is the place itself was recognized in the eighth century as a holy site by the visit of Guru Rinpoche. However, uh, uh, the main structure was built in 17th century by uh, Gelsen Tindin Rapke. And not just in Bhutan, the Tiger Nest is also considered as one of the holiest sites in, uh, in the Buddhist world and known as one of the top 10 pilgrimage sites in the Buddhist world. So then, uh, Tiger Nest, then moving. Uh, moving on, we also visit some zongs, which are fortresses, the Punaka zong, Paro zong, and the giant Buddha st statue. These are some of the cultural highlights of our countries. The zong, uh, we do have a zong system from very long time back, but then most of the zongs are built in 17th century when the country was unified. And that time the zongs were built mostly for the as a fortress for the defensive purpose. Because in 17th century, Bhutan was not really peaceful. We have many Tibetan invasions. To fight back the Tibetan invasion, the master who unified our country start building a zong for the defensive purpose. And currently the zong we use for two purposes. Most of the zong have a center tower which divide the zong into two part. And one part of the zong we use for the religious purpose and one part of the zong we use for administration purpose. So in the trip, this zong, the middle one, the Punaka zong, we'll also visit this Punaka zong, which is supposed to be one of the most beautiful zong in the country, built in between two river, the female river flowing from the left-hand side of the zong, and we have a male river flowing on the right-hand side of the zong. 
and then going ahead to uh, our nature track trip. One of the nature track trip also coincide with the Black Neck Print Festival, which is a very interesting festival. The Black Neck Print Festival, we have a place called Pukjika Valley where the, which is a wintering round for the Black Neck Print. So by first week of November, the Black Neck Print start arriving at the Pukjika Valley. So the local people in Pochika Valley, in order to welcome the Black Neck Green to the valley, they organized a one-day event, a special Black Neck Green Festival. So during the Black Neck Festival, the entire community in that uh, Pochika Valley take part. The women dress in a, a beautiful costume, start performing the folk dances, the monasteries, the monk in the monasteries, they start performing the mass dance. And one of the most interesting thing about that festival is the bottom one, where the local children, the school children, they dress in a green costume and perf start performing the green dance. So moving on, we have a textile. We also visit a textile museum. Bhutan is very famous for uh, hand-woven textile, which uh, we uh, there's a lot of different textiles are woven in uh, Bhutan. Uh, our textile actually face a challenge uh, from, from India, like they start manufacturing in a mass quantity by machines. So in order to preserve the textile, the Bhutanese textile, our queen mother has commissioned a textile museum in Bhutan, where they train a young woman from different part of the country to preserve the textile. So we'll have a chance to visit this textile museum. Then moving on, I'll be talking about the birding in Bhutan. Bhutan is a fantastic destination for the bird watching. Uh, about 783 species of bird are uh, recorded in Bhutan, of which uh, three species are critically endangered and two species are endangered and about 14 species are considered as a vulnerable and 25 near-threatened species are recorded in Bhutan. While Bhutan actually doesn't have uh, any endemic species, but then we have about 12 species that are uh, classified as a restricted range species. So then, one of the bird, one of the main target, the key species of the bird we'll be looking, we'll be trying on the trip is white bellied heroin. And so far we have been successful in most of our nature track trip to see this bird, it's a white bellied heroin, one of the rarest heroin in the world. And this heroin is believed to be a very critically endangered heroin in the world with a population of less than 60 individuals worldwide. So, According to the BirdLife International, uh, Bird Life International, probably this heron is extinct in Nepal and believed to be extinct in Bangladesh. Uh, now most of the, uh, the population are either in the northern Burma, northeast India and Bhutan. And Bhutan is believed to be one of the stronghold for this uh, white bellied heron because people, as per the research, about 40 to 50 uh, percent of the population of this bird uh, occurred in Bhutan. Then the other birds of uh, interest, like uh, we'll see a lot of pheasant, but this three is uh, special pheasant, like the first one is a Himalayan monal. Himalayan monal is one of the most beautiful pheasant in, in the Himalayas. And the male Himalayan uh, monarch, they also refer that bird as a rainbow color because it has a metallic multicolor plumage uh, displays. Maybe this is a reason why people believe that the male Himalayan uh, monarch have a seven different color. Then also the blood pheasant, which is fairly common in Bhutan, we see in, in a small flocks. Then the Kalish pheasant, which is uh, another common pheasant in Bhutan. Then other species of interest included uh, include was trovon, which is also a near threatened species. Then the next one, the yellow ram honey guide, 
one of the two species of the honey guide that occurred in Bhutan. Then we have a Rufus neck hornbill, Rufus neck hornbill, sorry, the great hornbill. Uh, this is one of the four species of the hornbill that occur in Bhutan. Then beautiful nuthatch. Beautiful nuthatch is uh, one of the scar, the last one here, the beautiful nuthatch. The beautiful nuthatch is a scar resident of Himalayan foothills. This bird is one of the most sought after specialty of Bhutan uh, avifauna. So on most of our trip, we have a very good chance for this bird. Then another interesting species we get on the trip is the ibis bill. Ibis bill is a very special bird in Himalayas. This elegant waders with a long thicker bill and they form a monotypic family. There's no other species in their family. Uh, I understand this bird is getting harder to see elsewhere in Himalaya, but in Bhutan it's a fairly easy. This is a resident species in Bhutan and it can be seen throughout the year. Then the next one is again a very beautiful pheasant, a satya trochophyne. Uh, uh, one of the most striking pheasant of the Himalayan. And this pheasant is a very good chances, the good chances for uh, in the, during the month of March to April. Then here I am showing you the picture of some, some of the black neck green in their winter habitat in Fujika. So just now I, I, I am sharing just a few highlights of our nature track trip, but there are much to see. We also engage, try to engage our clients with the local people, try to interact with the local people. Sometimes occasionally, depending on the clients, we also do, uh, uh, fix some appointment to visit some schools and take a bird walk in the pristine na uh, national park in the country. And on most trips, we successfully spot uh, around 250 to 700 uh, bird species on, on any of our nature track trip. So with this, I end my presentation. Uh, my name is Rajan Jolly. I have been working with Nature Trek from last uh, just over 20 years. I look after some of the tours of Indian subcontinent. And today I will be talking about my favorite country, which I had the pleasure of visiting twice in the last few years. I love uh, the culture, the history, the people, the food, and above all, the rich uh, wildlife of the country. So just to let you know, I am in Southampton, um, uh, <laughs> Chile, Southampton, uh, from my home. So let's start with the with the presentation. So to give you some perspective of the country, it is um, in Indian Ocean, southeast of India. It's a small island. It is only um, around, I think it's four times smaller than the size of UK with a population of 21 million people. 71% of the population practice Buddhism. So it's very rich with lovely monasteries, with stupas, with Buddha statues. And above all, it is paradise for nature and wildlife lovers. So we will be talking about uh, our most popular Sri Lankan trip, which is wildlife and history. As the name suggests, uh, we will be uh, focusing on the rich wildlife of the island and also the highlights, cultural highlights of the country. We use Sri Lankan Airlines. It's the only direct flight to Colombo. There are few more airlines which goes to Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka to Colombo, like Emirates, Gulf Air, Thai, they, but they all are indirect. So this is the only direct flight. It takes just over 10 hours and the timings are also very good. We fly in the evening 
uh, from London Heathrow and arrive next day in the afternoon in Colombo. And on the way back, it's a day flight. So very convenient, very comfortable. But having said that, if anyone has any preference, it can be catered to. We arrive in Colombo in the afternoon and we travel on to Anuradhapura. En route, we'll be stopping at different places to do birding, to stretch, and also to have these lovely, delicious fruits, the papayas, the bananas, and the coconut water. That's my favorite. It's so delicious. We arrive in Anuradhapura in the evening and just sleep and enjoy the luxury of the hotel. Anuradhapura is the sacred the sacred ancient capital of Sri Lanka. It is also the eighth World Heritage Site. So very important in terms of uh, religion, in terms of Buddhism. And the ruins which are, which are there are all very well kept. We'll be visiting a few monuments there, but we'll be also visiting this lovely place which is very holy for buddhist for the whole um, for the country you when you go there you will see a lot of locals a lot of buddhist chanting praying the atmosphere is very nice the reason is this holy fig tree the roots of this tree were brought from india from a place called sarnath where lord buddha got his enlightenment and uh, it is 2200 years years old so it is the oldest tree and people believe you go and you if you pray there all your wishes will come true so it's a lovely place to go and wish this is the hotel uh, where we stay in Anuradhapura. On this tour, we use different ranges of hotels. So we uh, use small family-run hotels, heritage hotels, a standard, and some with a bit of a luxury. And this is one of them. On uh, from Anuradhapura, we give an optional option uh, optional extension to visit Polanavor, which is only an hour's drive from Anuradhapura, and we go to see different monuments but this is the most famous one the standing and the reclining buddha this reclining buddha is 14 meters long and is carved from one one stone these uh, monuments are were built in 12th century so you can imagine and this is the night view on the left. We have um, more monuments there, which we go and see, and we also do some birding. So it is um, a day trip, which we organize if somebody wants to see more culture. But let's give culture a bit of a rest and move on to our next wildlife destination, which is Sigria. So we'll travel to Sigria to look for some lovely endemic species like the Sri Lankan grey hornbill. We look for Sri Lankan wood shrike, uh, Sri Lankan jungle fowl. And this is a place where we, where we also have the opportunity of doing a night game drive to look for some nocturnal mammals. So we'll be looking for fishing cat, the wren slender loris. We'll be looking for gray slender loris. So these lorises are only six to ten inches tall. They're not very big. They're mainly found in uh, southern India and in Sri Lanka. Uh, they breed around twice a year and have one or two offsprings. As you can see, they're mesmerizing eyes, but the eyes are very sensitive to light. So they are very active at night. So when we go on our night game drive, we make sure we don't do, use flash, flash photography. We also look for uh, common palm civet. We'll be looking for giant flying squirrel, jungle cat. So if you like the nocturnal life and you want to see more of it, we have another trip called Sri Lanka by night. And that departs next year in March. And we still have spaces available on that trip. And we on that trip, we focus more on the night game drives, on the nocturnal mammals. A very good trip to go on. While in Sigria, we can't miss this impressive uh, rock fortress. This rock fortress was built, was carved, as you can see here, back in 1500 years ago. 1500 years ago, it was carved. And you will see some lovely fresco paintings, the king throne, some lovely views from the top of uh, the rock. But yes, you have to climb 1200 steps to go up 
<laughs> so some of our uh, clients don't want to do it. Um, obviously, you have to be adventurous enough to go up. Their proper stay is going up, but they're 1,200. So if somebody doesn't feel like going up, they can stay in the grounds, in the gardens of the Rock Fortress, which are very good for birding. So we have a guide who is there, and he will take you around, and you will do some birding there. This is the hotel where we stay in Sigria. We can have lovely views of the rock fortress from our hotel. The rooms are comfortable, ensuite, air conditioning, uh, of course, swimming pool, but lovely restaurant, good food. We will travel on to now uh, Dambula. Dambula is the place where we see prehistoric caves. The fresco paintings which you see in the in the slide, uh, the Buddhas which you see, the reclining Buddha, they all were put in around 300 years ago. But these are all prehistoric caves. So a nice stop uh, before we travel on to um, uh, Kandy, which is uh, the holy city of the country because of the Temple of Tooth, which is here on the right. The tooth relic of Lord Buddha is kept here in this temple. So you, when you go and visit this temple, you will see people uh, offering flowers, uh, food, chanting. So again, a lovely atmosphere. We also visit a botanical garden when we are in uh, in in candy it is a very well kept uh, botanical garden amazing orchids so nice place to visit in the evening we offer an option for people to visit and see the folk dances of sri lanka which are really lovely i have seen it i loved it the beautiful colorful dresses the musical instruments the colorful dresses it's a nice uh, few hours folk dances and then we come back and relax and and uh, next day we start our journey onto the hills but we, before we reach the hills before we reach uh, Nuralia, we will stop in a beautiful tea factory to see um, how the tea is processed how the tea is made because sri lankan tea is world famous so we want to see how they process process it what is first flush what is second flush because there are so many different varieties of tea and we also get an opportunity to, to taste Sri Lankan tea. So it's, it's a lovely stop. And then we go on to Little England. <laughs> it is known as, uh, known as Little England because of uh, the whole atmosphere, the hills, the late Gregory, the Victorian architect, the old post office. So lovely place. And this is the only place where you will need your warm clothing. Sri Lanka overall is a very much tropical country. So the temperature remains similar throughout the year. It is in, in between 24 till 34, between depending on when you go. But this is the only place where it drops down to around 10 to 15 degrees and you will need your warm clothing. From uh, Nuralia, we next day in the morning, we will visit Horton Plains National Park. It is only an hour's drive, but we leave very early in the morning to make sure we see the best endemic species which this place has to offer. So there are some lovely endemic species which we can see here. When, but when we are there, we will also be doing a walk. It's an eight kilometers walk in a loop here. Uh, and it's an easy walk. It's not very difficult. Obviously, we see waterfalls. But again, if somebody doesn't feel like walking, they can easily just stay uh, in that area and enjoy the bird watching. So we'll be looking for the endemic species like whist whistling thrush, we'll be looking for yellow-eyed bulbul, we'll be looking for Sri Lankan white eye, and the critically endangered purple-faced leaf monkey. So this is very difficult to see, very shy. Uh, but on our previous trips, some of our trips, we have been lucky to see them. I think our guides are amazing. They know where they are. And uh, our groups have been lucky to see them, but very difficult to see uh, on most trips. So moving on, uh, we will do the, the, the most longest journey on, on this tour, which is to Tissimarama. It takes around seven hours, but we'll make it comfortable. We will stop en route again to do some birding, to stretch, and we will also have lunch in a spice garden. So we will see uh, the different spices, how they are grown. We get the opportunity to taste them. And if we want, we can, you can buy some spices from there as well. So it's a lovely stop before we reach the Samaharama. In Tissimarama, we do some birding in the lake. Uh, 
and uh, there's some good species to be seen. But the main reason for stopping in this Maharama is to reach Yala uh, and have a stop because it's such a long drive. So we want to give a break in between before we carry on to Yala National Park, which is the most famous national park of Sri Lanka. And very good for leopards. Sri Lankan leopards are um, bigger. They are not shy. So very good chances of seeing them. Uh, and this is the best place to see. In uh, uh, Yara National Park, we stay very close to the park uh, in a place called Cinnamon Wild Lodge. It is next on the shores of Indian Ocean. And from the grounds, we have seen wild elephants. We have amazing birding. It is only five minutes away from the National Park. So lovely place to stay. Comfortable cottages, as you can see in this uh, picture. It's again en suite, um, all the comfortable uh, of modern facilities are there, air conditioning. And we visit then the Yala National Park in, in search of leopards. As you can see, they are bigger than other leopards. And um, there are 50 leopards in this national park. I'm not saying that when you enter, you will see one. You still have to work hard. You still have to listen to the alarm calls, look for the pug marks. The guides work very hard on it. But yes, the chances are good that you will see one sitting on the tree or near on the track or next to the water hole. But as it is such a good place to see leopards, it is very popular and at the same time it is very crowded as well. And as it is crowded and people were going in the past and saying, oh Rajan, it is very crowded, what should we do? We really want to go there, we want to enjoy the wildlife, but we don't want to have hundreds of jeeps around us. So very cleverly, a few years ago, we found another place called Lungamvera National Park, which is only 45 minutes away from Yala, very neighboring park of Yala National Park, and very similar wildlife is seen there. So we see ruddy mangoes, we see jackals, we see leopards and sloth bears. There are thousands of sloth bears in Sri Lanka, and this place, Lungamvera National Park, is a very good place to see them. And recently, only the trip which had just come back, the, the same trip has recently come back only a day ago, and they saw leopards and sloth bear in Lungamvera National Park. And it is a quieter part of um, the whole national park, so it's much quieter than, than Yala. So people really enjoyed the experience. We see marshmallow crocodiles, and these are the jeeps which we use for our game drives. So very comfortable, as you can see, and hopefully we will have somebody from the wild accompanying us as well on our lovely game drives. Our next destination is Udawalawe National Park. We stay in this beautiful hotel called Centuria Wild, which is not very far from the entrance of the Wallawe National Park. This national park is the best in whole of Asia to see wild elephants. There are around 700 wild elephants in an area of, of around 200 square miles. So very high chances you enter the national park and hopefully you will see wild elephants. In Udewala way, there is a transit home as well for elephants where they are uh, kept uh, just to look after them. So if some uh, an elephant is injured or is needy, is brought here and they're fed well, they're looked after well and they're released back in the wild. And we can observe them feeding the elephants from a platform. So I took this picture a few years ago from a platform. So we were allowed to sit, so we, without troubling the wildlife, without troubling the elephants, we were just sitting on a side and observing how they were feeding elephants. And when they are in good health, they will be released back in the wild. The tour ends here uh, in a place called Sine Raja Rainforest. It is the best place to see the endemic species. We have a trip called Sri Lanka Endemic Bird Species. And in that, we try and see 34 endemic species of Sri Lanka. And we have been lucky in seeing it. 
out of 34 endemic species, 25 are found in this rainforest, in Sinai Raja for rainforest. 60% of the trees which are found there are endemic to this region. 50% of endemic mammals and butterflies are, 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 are uh, endemic to this, this lovely rainforest and is also a UNESCO World Heritage Site, uh, such an important place to visit. So we visit, we go on open jeeps, to, till the entrance of the uh, reserve and from there we do all our birding on foot and hopefully we in the past we've seen flock of birds we have seen many endemics especially the star endemic which is uh, the blue magpie so sri lankan blue magpie is the star bird endemic bird of sri lanka the flight of this bird is not very good so it is seen around that area around that region we also look for cerebral scops owl. It was founded only recently in 2001 by Deepal, who is a tour leader. Uh, the frogmouth, um, we will look for a yellow fronted barbet, a changeable hawk eagle. So that's where we end our tour and we travel on back to Colombo. We stay a night and then we fly, take a day flight with Sri Lankan Airlines back home. But with this tour we offer two extensions so if you have more time you can look and and book the blue whales extension which is a lovely extension to to go on we use these boats for our um, uh, boat trips in the morning the, the the boat trips in the morning are for four hours there are no boat trips in the afternoon so we do our morning boat trips and look for of, of course blue whales but also look for other whales as well sperm whales in the past we have been lucky to see killer whales as well and uh, we have seen uh, spinner dolphins I think on most of our uh, trips. So a very good extension to go on. This is the hotel where we stay. It's in a fisherman's village and um, there's a swimming pool, all the modern facilities. In the afternoon, we visit Gaul Dutch Fort. So Gaul is another city, which is only around 45 minutes away from where we stay. And in one of the afternoons, we visit the city to see the fort, to see the famous um, Gaul uh, Cricket Stadium. And um, uh, with this um, uh, um, extension, after it ends, we go back to Colombo and then fly home. But as we keep you so busy with this trip, as you may have noticed, you're traveling to so many different places, seeing so much. We thought, why don't we offer you another extension, which is a beach extension. So you can do both extensions, the Blue Whales and the beach extension, just to relax. So this is the hotel where we, which we use, swimming pool next to the beach, and a lovely place to relax for a few days. You must be wondering what happened to all the lovely food which Sri Lanka has to offer. So here is a picture to tempt you all. My favorite being coconut roti, but there's so much uh, Sri Lanka offers, coconut curries. Having said that, we can cater to all dietary requirements, vegan, bland, anything you like, it can be catered to. So thank you very much. I will be open to questions very soon after Mukda's presentation. You can write on the chat, but thank you very much for listening to me. Over to Matt. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, my name is Mukda and like my, Matt said, I'm joining you from Mumbai today. I have been associated with Nature Trek for a couple of years now, leading their tours in India, in the tiger country, basically. And in this particular presentation, I'll be talking about two of the magnificent animals that one may encounter while they, while they visit India. That's Black Panther and the tigers. So let's talk about both the species one by one, starting with Black Panther. So many people still think that Black Panther is a different species from leopards, but no, Black Panthers are the melanistic leopards. Melanistic, uh, mel melanism in general is a genetic condition where uh, animals have excess of dark pigmentation, which causes their uh, anim the fur look more blackish in color. So if you see the black panther, perhaps in the sunlight or more closely, you can still see the rosettes, but they appear very blackish in color from far. And it's a very rare genetic condition. There are not many individuals that you can one can found, uh, find uh, in the world. 
this black panthers are generally found in africa and very few parts of asia including the southern india where we have a tour called the realm of black panther basically this tour is uh, being uh, conducted in the state called karnataka which is on the south of the uh, india as you can see in the second uh, map nagarhole national park here very close to kerala kerala border we have nagarhole national park where we have this famous uh, melanistic leopard or a black panther that we call um, and lots of tours we have uh, which conduct you know tours in this particular region why this particular uh, national park because as you can see this is the nagarhole national park however he, it has a really good corridor that you know flows through the different parts of um, a really important hotspots biodiversity city hotspot that we have in india called uh, western ghats so nagarhole is a part of that particular area leading uh, to have a really good biodiversity not only of mammals but also for uh, birds butterflies and many other invertebrates which can be seen around this particular area so how did this black panther tour started it started when saya met cleopatra basically saya is this black panther uh saya directly translates into shadow in hindi and cleopatra is this particular female uh, which is there so as you can see you must have seen uh, on social media or internet there is one picture when cleopatra is standing in the front and saya is just behind her and it looks like a shadow of cleopatra that is how the saya name came so basically uh, it started back in 2014 when these uh, leopards were seen together for the first time and they are the mating pair of course uh, so that is how the the sighting of saya started ba dates back in uh, 2014 this picture is taken by one of our tour leaders kostub moe who leads most of our tours in uh, nagarhole region or kabini region this particular male saya he is the only individual along with few of the non uh, very human tolerating species of melanistic leopard found in that area saya since we can see him from 2014 he is quite used to vehicles so when we see uh, this particular uh, meal standing in front of your vehicle he'll be just there he is not afraid of vehicles he is not afraid of uh, any uh, human being around them uh, around him he is quite a uh, show poser and uh, when we see them we have uh, you know quite a lot of time to spend with him to understand the behavior to see how uh, you know he reacts to various uh, situations so yes saya is a show stopper but having said that uh, it's a wild area you know we have access uh, to the wildlife safaris in in india in very uh, constrained area called tourism zone and the rest of it is non tourism zone saya had his territory in the tourism till 20 uh, 21 but last year he's moved to uh, non tourism area but even last year since it's a wildlife and the tourism area is only for humans and for their knowledge and their constraint it is not for animals we have had couple of sightings of saya even when he had the territory in the non tourism area so wildlife always surprise you you may never know when do they come and you know uh, surprise you at any point of time having said that it is not only about the saya but the different wildlife that one can see uh in kabini or nagarhole we have the royal bengal tigers indian leopards uh asian elephants and smooth coated otters very uh, majestic animals that one can see there right now we have a tour going on there kaustub is leading the tour and <coughs> excuse me and uh the group has already seen the leopards elephants and a brief sighting of royal bengal tiger and yes smooth coated otters playing by the river and you know uh, just really good time uh, watching them doing stuff doing some um, very stupid stuff 
so yes that is a good time one can have there along with that we have uh, wild dogs and there is very beautiful uh, magnificent huge squirrel called malabar giant squirrel with really good um, maroonish coat cover along with that we have a uh, bird very good bird life in that area like i said is a part of western ghats so we have quite an uh, quite a uh, endemism in that particular area we have crested hawk eagle one of the dominating species of birds of prey in that area we have malabar pied hornbill like we saw uh, great hornbills in maths and norbus presentation it is the sister version of malabar region um, of hornbills in this particular area then we have the only parrot which one can see uh, here here as in in the whole of india rest of them are parakeets so we have vernal hanging parrots we have baya weaver uh, if you are lucky you might see them nesting uh, making the nest and you know female coming and inspecting the nest and rejecting the nest and then poor male again trying to make new nest so it's a fun activity we have sloth bears there very good number of or good population density of sloth bears in that area and we have striped striped neck mongoose as well there after talking to the wildlife that one may encounter in this region we have different sort of accommodation here we prefer to stay in kabini river lodge basically it's a very comfortable basic accommodation which blends with the natural surrounding in that area this is not a luxury luxury lodge but since they have the maximum number of uh, jeep permits with them being the semi government uh, property we try to be with them as maximum of the nature trek clans they are interested into wildlife and they want to spend maximum of their time looking out for wildlife this is the best place with the maximum safari options that we can uh, offer to our clients it is very close to the park uh, we just have couple of minutes drive to reach the park from this particular area so that way also this accommodation is quite preferable over other luxury options we have in that area so if one needs to explore the forest there has to be various uh, commuting options there one of them is jeep safari so this is how the modified jeeps in these areas are this is a mahendra vehicle which accommodates about eight clients one driver and one guide both of them are from the lodge and uh, they are registered with the forest department there are two slots that we uh, can opt for jeep safari that is morning slots and the evening slots so approximately 3 and a half hours to 4 hours drive uh, we do uh, at each slots and then it's on the shared basis <coughs> sorry i'm sorry for the uh, breaks because i have a little bit of bad throat here and then another safari is uh, safari options that we have here are boat safaris having a really beautiful uh, river which uh, sort of you know uh, encompasses the entire wild uh, national park we have boat safari options so whatever you see from the jeep can be seen from the boats as well if you are lucky enough and um, trust me when i say uh, whatever you see from the jeep and whatever you see from the boat both of them are very different experiences even if a pig or a wild boar or a peacock that you see from the jeep and the same experience from the boat has a really really different uh, sort of impact and again boat safari is generally on the shared basis along with this main tour of uh, kabini or nagarhole national park we have uh, a lot of options that one can do uh, with their pre and post extension uh, one can go to uh, say for example uh, mysore and for the post extension we have the option of vinard so let our team in uk uh, know about your preferences and we'll be happy to cater to your taste let's talk about tigers now uh, this was all about uh, melanistic leopard or the black panther now we'll talk about the tigers directly we'll discuss one tour that we have quite sought after in india it's called tiger direct 
Yes, uh, India harbors about seventy five percent of world's wild tiger population, and it is it has been increasing a lot in past couple of years. As you can see uh, see here, in twenty eighteen there were about close to three thousand individuals in the wild in India. Now in twenty twenty two, when we had the recent uh, census, the population has already gone to uh, more than three thousand five hundred. It's specifically as 3,682 individuals. Talking about that, there's a beautiful routing that we have for Tiger Direct, uh, wherein in the main tour, we just do Pench and Kana. And if we add the pre and the post extension to this particular tour, then we cover Tadoba and Satpura as well. In this particular tour, it's a seven, uh, nine days main tour with uh, a week's pre and post extension about four days in Tadoba and uh, three days in Satpura. So we start from Nagpur. Nagpur has an international airport. There's Qatar Airways, which has a direct, uh, which has a flight to Nagpur, uh, taking a short layover at Doha. So uh, you start from Hitro, come to Doha, then to Nagpur. It is about, you take a rest in Nagpur for the night because it's a midnight uh, arrival that you have in Nagpur. You take a rest at the Radisson Hotel. Then from Radisson, you start your journey next day after breakfast. You go to Tadoba, which is about 2.5 hours from Nagpur. You stay in Tadoba for four nights looking out for various uh, wildlife there. From there, you drive to Pench on your fifth, uh, fourth day. It's about 4.5 hours, about four and a half to five hours drive, depending on the road conditions and the traffic. From Pange, then you drive four hours to Kanha. After a couple of days, you spend four nights in Kanha again. And from there, whoever have the post extension, go to Satpura. Satpura has a really uh, comfortable drive of two hours to Bhopal, uh, from where one can take a flight to Mumbai. And from Mumbai, you can go back to uh, home, London Heathrow. So talking about tigers, we have winter sighting and summer sighting. Yes, there are two types of sighting one can have. We have uh, both the uh, season tours available. So in winter sighting, what is the difference and pros and cons of winter sighting and the summer sighting, basically? In winter sighting, um, the sightings can be little challenging as we have a little bit of undergrowth in that area. But if you see the tiger, which is quite possible maximum of time, yes, we do see the tigers and we have the success rate of 100% tiger sightings uh, for, you know, more than 50 tours of tiger direct as of now. So in that area, when you see the tiger, you have a really beautiful background, you know, very contrast background, green, yellow, you know, different sort of colors are there, which contracts, contracts the animal there. Whereas in the summer sightings, sightings are more because uh, tigers being hot bodied animals, they like to come to a area where there's a lot of shade, there's water, they are chilling in the water, drinking water. So the sightings are more but the background will be more of a brown. So that is the pros and cons of having the winter settings. Both of them are really good. And perhaps one should try uh, coming for this tour in the winter as well as in the summer. So all these parks that we have included in the, in the itinerary uh, have their own speciality. Like Tadoba is always famous for tigers. It has been famous for tigers. Uh, the females here, they are quite bold. This is the third generation of tigers which are seeing uh, humans around them. So these females being so bold, they get their cubs with them even at a very young age. So there's a lot of chances of seeing, you know, family of tigers in Tadoba compared to other, other parks. In Pange, because it's a rocky area, the terrain is quite rocky. It's a leopard's lair. Leopards prefer to stay in those particular areas. Kana, again, it's a tiger's country. It's a tiger's area. Because there are a lot of grasslands, the, the number of herbivores in that area is more. And being on the flatlands, tiger, being the ambush predators, they can just, you know, uh, go stalk the animal, 
take a leap and catch hold of that particular animal which leads to uh, you know more number of sightings in that particular area and then about the sat uh, satpura satpura is really good for balu the bear uh if you are lucky and if you have opt for satpura extension then perhaps you can see a mother with two or one cub you know clinging on to the furs of mother and taking the joy ride of uh, free taxi services across the central indian park or satpura basically so it's not about only four or three uh, key species it's about the other wildlife also i did the tiger direct uh, tour in march 2023 very recently about 6 months ago and in that particular tour we saw more than 140 species of birds understand this is this was the summer season it was not the migration typical migration period but still we had the opportunity of seeing more than 140 species of birds we had a sighting of uh, 12 different tigers i'm not saying how many times we have seen it but i'm saying 12 different tigers were seen perhaps couple of them were seen you know on uh, two consecutive safaris as well we had seven leopard sightings five packs of wild dogs were seen during this tour and there were about four sloth bear sightings we saw about 15 different species of butterflies because it was not really the season for butterflies but still 15 species is is still a good number moving forward what lodges do we use in this particular area for the main tour in pinch we use tuli tiger corridor it's a beautifully uh, built uh lodge with uh with a uh, cottage system very uh, sort of you know separated from each other each cottage and you have your own veranda <coughs> excuse me you have your own veranda you have really comfortable facilities in pinch and in kanha we have kanha jungle lodge the host here a really dear friend and they are one of the best hosts that we have indian in india i can say it very confidently uh dimple and mr bharti both of them are a uh, couple basically and with a uh, dimple uh, you can you know when you have time in between your safaris you can do some culinary experiences she can teach you how to make indian tea how to make indian bread so it's a whole of mixture she is into small uh, creepy crawlers so one can see you know a lot of invertebrates like spiders and butterflies and what not in that particular area so it's a fun time not just safari safari but other experiences as well in tadoba we uh, prefers vasara jungle lodge beautiful lodge just next to the uh, one of the gates of the uh, tadoba uh, tiger reserve and in satpura it's a rainy pane jungle lodge again very beautiful lodge very very nice uh, wilderly kept lodge a lot of times one can hear uh, alarm calls just by sitting in your room so it's very nice in that way quite a wild experience there so when we say about the tours in india uh, let that be the black panther tour or the tiger tour it's not just the animals it's much more than the animals it's about the culture culture as in as you can see in the picture this is uh, the culture which is followed in taduba so they put this statue of a uh, tiger when somebody from the family is killed by any unfortunate uh, tiger encounter so they put this particular uh, statue they pray uh, to the god and uh, the god is the tiger god so they pray to them and say uh, you know that's fine you have taken one person from our family but now please do care take care of us make sure that we do not get into any bad situation we trust you we uh, follow you you are our god and you know uh, let's let just be in the peace so this is the culture there's no uh, conflict there there's there's more sort of respect towards the nature here so that is what is the culture is all about we have beautiful landscape this is again from the core area of tadoba wherein you can see such beautiful places 
in national parks we do not have human intervention without the permission that is why these places are quite pristine and one can enjoy just looking at the landscape if people are into landscape photography we have beautiful spots the guides know it the tour leaders know it and they can take you to such places then about the lifestyle you will uh, have uh, you know encounter with local tribal people on various occasions your drivers guides the staff in the lodges they are from uh, you know tribal areas we choose the lodges which have you know about 70 to 80 percent of the local staff so you can understand about their lifestyle uh, in festival season one can see their uh, say for example folk dance or folk events in particular area and india is is really nothing without its cuisine so we can offer various local cuisine along with uh, you know a uh, specific requirement we have the vegan tour of tiger direct going in march um uh, 2024 so we have the specialized food related tours along with the uh, wildlife in such areas so we'll be happy to cater to your taste uh, on on request and like i have been saying our tour leaders are something who will make sure all your experiences are really up to the mark they will make sure your travel journey your your uh, stay your cultural insights the guidance the wildlife everything is uh, top notch and this they will make sure of making this tour memorable for you so that is it from my side thank you so much and i look forward to meet you sometime in india thank you over to you matt That's great, Mukta. Thank you very much. A wonderful talk and some amazing photos as well. Um, some more incredible food. And just on the food, actually, um, if you are vegan or gluten free or anything, our tours to the subcontinent very much cater for this. So um, you'll be in very good hands, no matter what your dietary requirements. Mukta, you're free to show your face if you wish. Not a problem if not. <laughs> okay, so we're just going to the questions and answers now. It looks like Norb Norbu has left the building, but never mind. I was going to ask him what has caused the decline of the white-bellied heron in Bhutan, but no doubt it's either overfishing or polluted waters. But we will uh, cross that bridge another time. Um, so. Rajan, a question for you. Thank you very much, everyone, also for your questions. Please continue to pop them through the Q and A. But Rajan, uh, leeches in Sri Lanka in January and February um, are they an irritant? And what precautions, other than leech socks, can be uh, taken? And also for other irritants uh, in in the country? Uh, yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much for the question. Yes, uh, mainly the rainforests in Niraja and few more wetlands around the country. We do uh, recommend all our clients to bring little leech socks, and if they can't buy it here in in UK or if if, if it's difficult to find one, just um, come to Sri Lanka and our agents will have a pair for you, which you can very reasonably buy from them. This is uh, the best way of uh, getting. Uh, Uh, have they having the protection? Otherwise, I'm afraid uh, not not much. Even even in January and or February, which is um, not really a wet season, but uh, Sri Lanka gets two monsoons a year, and it's very difficult to not have rain on your tour. And especially in Sinaraja, which is a rainforest, you will going to encounter rain. So yes, I think the best thing is is the leaf socks. Yeah, great. Thank you, Rajan. I certainly needed leech socks when I went there, so um, <laughs> highly recommended. Um, just a quick one, folks. I've popped uh, a link in the chat um, if you would like to link to the Nature Trek history, which I mentioned at the start of the show. A very interesting read and um, sums us up in a nutshell, I'd say. Um, and the same for you, Magda. Um, are there any um, irritants um, in India? Any leeches or mozzies? Are they bad at the time of year that Nature Trek goes there? um i would say not really because maximum of our tours uh, in our tours we have to be in the jung uh, you know safari vehicle so uh, not much of need there and even uh, in central india or the southern part of india maximum of these are not 
completely rainforest so we do not have a lot of moisture there so not much of problem if rains are not around so not really needed uh, for the leaf soaks basically right great for, news. for i will just add very quickly uh, because i get this question quite a lot so i will i will share my answer with all 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 the clients here on our indian trips the most of the tiger trips we do in central india and mukda also touched in southern india in nagarhole these two places especially central india the the risk of malaria is very low even even in 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 nagarhole as well but there is malaria if you click on the map and you will see that certain points on the map it will say high risk and what are a uh, recommendation and what most clients are doing uh, they do take deet sprays which are very effective they cover the arms and legs and um, very few people are having malaria proclectives because the risk is low but there is risk and they're trying to cover it and they're trying to take take this deet spray so that's what i think um, you could also do if you like to Thank Great, thank you, Rajan, for that. Thank you. We just had a question come through from an anonymous attendee. Uh, that's fine. Do you recommend Kerala as a wildlife destination? Rajan, for you first, maybe. Oh, oh, definitely. Oh, yes. Yeah, we we have a lovely trip called Kerala Backwaters, and we highly recommend uh, Southern India, Kerala, to be visited. It's um, a paradise for wildlife lovers. We have Parya Tiger Reserve. which tiger sightings are not that good but the birding is amazing and we have munar we have irukkulam so there are some lovely places where you can go and enjoy the uh, wildlife enjoy the bird life of kerala and on our kerala backwaters trip we also have a added advantage what we do is we have a night on the rice boat so you uh, spend a night on the beautiful rice boat which is also like a house boat and you spend uh, sailing down on uh, this uh, lovely rice boat which has ensuite facilities some also have air conditioning lovely food and in the mornings we stop at different villages uh, we go to the villages meet the local people have coconut water so we try with wildlife we try and give you some culture as well Great, Rajan. Thank you very much for that detailed answer. Uh, one for Mukta here. A uh, question from Sheena. Thank you, Sheena, very much. Uh, what is the best month to visit for maximum wildlife sightings? In uh, India, Central India, for tigers. Right. Um, so I would say any time from say uh, November to March is a great time. Like I said. we have winter sightings we have summer sightings so all throughout this particular on season time is really best uh, for tiger sightings in india basically great what about have a wildlife as well like does the black panther Otherwise, have a particular season or is that rather more random no not really a particular season is definitely you know in in that particular uh, time frame from november to march or april because after april it's too hot uh, for anyone to be in that particular area uh, but other wildlife yes uh, we have really good sightings of uh, leopards sloth bears and uh, wild dogs throughout the season for birding season migratory time is uh, in the winters so till uh, february is a good time for migratory birds and after that we'll see all the resident birds but like i said in my presentation number is still good for anyone who's coming in india for the first time it's really a good season to be there anywhere between november to march no issues great and yes yeah, just following on for that says uh, sorry sorry rajan i'm um, in oh. the pool um November to March is also uh, the best time um, in terms of wintering Himalayan bird species, um, and also for the big game. But also avoids the uh, monsoon season as well. Rajan, anything to add? Uh, the, as Mukda rightly said, uh, that the season starts from November and goes on till March, April. 
Uh, in her presentation, I think very, very nicely, she has compared both uh, the seasons, the winter season and the summer season. And that is exactly what we want uh, our clients to experience, to experience both the seasons. Because the winter season, which starts from uh, October, November, we basically we start trips from October onwards. So October, November, December, January, these are mainly the winter seasons. And uh, the park closes for monsoons in end of June and they open in, in end of uh, September, early October. And that's when we start running the trips. So people who go in October or November, they found they find the national parks as pristine beauty. It is so green. It is so lovely. It looks like the, that it's a newborn national park. So the sightings uh, maybe uh, not that high, but when the sightings happen, it is one of the best sightings you will have because when you see the tigers coming out of this lovely greenery and the backdrop is, is lovely lush green, the sightings are magical. So they are one of the best sightings. But um, the sightings, because of the high vegetation, they're not that high. Whereas the sightings in February, March and April, they tend to be a lot higher. And the reason is very much because it's, it starts getting drier in the national park. It starts getting warmer. And even when you're Jeep, you can see the tiger from the distance because the vegetation is very low. And the tigers during that time, they're not getting enough water. So they are normally near the water holes. You can see them on the tracks. And it starts getting easier to find them, but we still have to work hard. We are not saying that you will go inside and you will quickly find it. But both the seasons have their advantages and disadvantages. So that's all I want to add. Thank you. Yep. <laughs> that's, that's great. Raj. Thank you very much for that. Um, dare I say another question for you, Rajan, from John Tibet. <laughs> Thank you very much, John, for your question. Um, the endemic birds trip in Sri Lanka does that take in any culture spots as well as the wildlife and history tour? Uh, the reason for that 10 day trip and calling it endemic uh, birds, birds of Sri Lanka is very much to focus on the birding because we, the target is very much to see all the 34 endemic species of Sri Lanka and uh, the places which we visit, including Sinaraja rainforest are all very much focused on birding. But yes, you see sculpture when you're traveling from one place to another, you see the local life, you will meet the villagers. If, if somebody is really keen, we can take them to a village as well uh, next to the park. So it can be done, but, but the main focus is very much birding. Mm, yeah, great. Thank you very much. Um, as Norbu isn't here, would you mind just briefly mentioning, a few people might be interested, um, in terms of altitude sickness in Bhutan, um, is there any likelihood of that or is it rather low elevations? It, it, it is low, uh, but what we have done in, in, uh, in, on our trips is we try and spend some time in the lowlands. Basically, all, it's all, more, mostly it's all hilly. But when we go to Paro, when we go to Thimpu, we spend more time there before we, going, uh, before we go to the higher altitude. So that way, the sickness is not that much. Uh, so people do uh, suffer from altitude sickness. And in the past, uh, one of our group members, I still remember now five years ago, he suffered um, in Pobachika Valley, but very soon he, he, he was fine. He was given medication and he was okay. But uh, the main re is, is what we do is try more, spend more time at uh, the, the cities. And when you climatize, then we go up. Great. Yeah, no, that makes sense. Very safe as well, Rajan. Very good. Um, one question for me um, is the elephant situation in Nepal. Do the rangers and clients use elephants uh, for elephant back rides? Um, and it's something that's here at Next Direct we do not do. Um, the rangers, however, do use it. Uh, an elephant back uh, to look out for local wildlife, but also uh, to spot any incoming uh, threats from predators. Um, and tigers are very used to the elephants wandering the long grass uh, with rangers atop, um, but soon scarver away in that respect. Uh, but in terms of clients, we're, uh, when we are on foot in the national parks, we are very much on foot, usually in between an an elephant with a ranger on top plus guides alongside us so all very safe um, and clients uh, will not take part in elephant back rides 
Okay, anything else? I think we are pretty much all are we not? Okay, no, another question here. Uh, Magda, I think it could be one for you. Um, oh, yes, yeah, so in terms of rangers using elephants, um, is this the case in, in Todoba? Uh, in Tadoba, we do not have the elephants at all. There are no elephants, but yes, in other parts of Central India, we have elephants like in Karna, Pain, Satpuda. You'll still find uh, elephants are being used by the rangers. We do not have the elephant safaris, elephant back safaris anymore. But in Tadoba, even for uh, wildlife, uh, you know, intervention for any uh, scientific reason or the reason of, for the forest department, we do not have elephants. Great. Thank you very much for clearing that one up. Okay, folks, I think that is it. There's no more questions. So for me, thank you very much, everyone, for joining. And please don't forget, our next online roadshow is on the 4th of December and features the reptiles and amphibians. Um, on our holidays, a uh, very select few holidays there. But um, as I say, it will certainly open up um, a different aspect of natural history to you. And I uh, promise me it will be a fascinating watch. So thank you very much, everyone, for joining this evening. And thank you very much, Mugda and Norbu, who has sadly left for joining us. I think it's now approaching 2 a.m. local time. So we do really appreciate your time. Yeah. And of course, thank you to Rajan, um, who's oh, always no. at the end of the phone, if you need to speak to him via the Nature Trek office. So that's all for me. And us, thank you very much indeed for joining. Until next time. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you.